Hey everyone, it is Zach, and today we're going to take a look at the Series 6 format because we ended up losing 16 great Pokemon, and today we're going to talk about who can replace Whimsicott. So, as we go into this, we're going to look at what Whimsicott usually did on the teams, and what can step in its place to maybe replace it in some of these roles. Now, the main question is, why is Whimsicott such a loss? For those of you who don't know, starting September 1st, the Series 6 rule change will eliminate the Pokemon that had the top 10 usage for Season 8 and Series 5. Uh, that eliminates 16 Pokemon, 10 from the singles and the doubles ranking system. And there was some overlap, so we ended up losing 16 Pokemon, and Whimsicott was one of them. So Whimsicott was the biggest prankster Pokemon. Prankster, if you don't know, gives a plus one, it gives it a priority to all status moves, such as Tailwind, Taunt, Thunder Wave, Fake Tears, Switcheroo, all these things get a plus one, which means they're going to go first. So Whimsicott was also the fastest prankster Pokemon, and was arguably the best Tailwind setter in VGC 2020, having that priority Tailwind. Low attack and high speed made it a great beat up user for justified strategies such as Terrakion, Cavalion, and as we saw with Wolf Glick's team earlier in the meta season one, series one, uh, Arcanine and Lucario. And Whimsicott just had such has such a great supportive move set with Charm. Sunny Day, Helping Hand, Safeguard, Fake Tears, Taunt, Switcher, Worry Seed, and not to mention the Tailwind that we've talked about previously. With all these moves that Whimsicott has access to, it's it fits in a lot of teams very well and does a lot of roles for just one Pokemon. Now if we look over at the stats that I grabbed from Bulbapedia, we see the HP is, is mid, low, attack doesn't matter, Defense is 85, special attack is 77, special defense is 75, and speed is 16. And once again, with that 16 speed, it made it the fastest prankster Pokemon. So it had low defenses, but most of the Whimsicott's carried a focus ash, so you were guaranteed at least one prankster move in case they doubled up on you. So in most cases, if you tried to just one shot it with one Pokemon, you were guaranteed two prankster moves, which could set up Whimsicott's teammates and help it deal a lot of damage or stop a lot of setups from the other side. So who can replace Whimsicott? It depends on what your main use for Whimsicott is. The biggest example of how to use Whimsicott is as a Tailwind setter. In this video, we're going to take a look at different ways Whimsicott was used and how we can replace it. None of these replacements are going to be one-to-one -one swaps. Switching Whimsicott for another Pokemon will always change your team type matchup and synergy, and some, some Prankster users or some Tailwind setters aren't always going to fit well with your team. This is just a list of Pokemon that could fill a certain role that Whimsicott may have done on your team. And for those of you wondering, Cottony doesn't learn Tailwind in Generation 8, or else it would probably just be a good swap. People would run it the same way that they ran Whimsicott, they'd give it a Focus Ash, and just give it the same move slot that you would give Whimsicott. But Cottony does not learn Tailwind, so if you're looking to fill the role of Whimsicott for other things other than Tailwind, there are probably some better Pokemon that we're going to take a look at in this video. Now, the first thing I want to talk to about is Whimsicott's most important use, and that's probably, arguably, Tailwind. Now, Tailwind is a move that you set it on your field, and it doubles the speed of the Pokemon on your side for four turns. So, no matter who's on the field, as long as they're on your side with Tailwind set, they're basically going to be plus two in speed. This could be really good for getting that hyper offense going and to slow down other hyper offensive teams going against you sometimes speed is very important and it's very critical to get 
the knock the knocking blow in a match especially with gen 8 where they change speed priority to activate instantly so before generation 8 if you set a tailwind it really wouldn't take into effect until turn 2 but with tailwind in generation 8 as soon as whimsicott uses it and because of prankster it's going to go first the speeds are going to change instantly now when looking at Tailwind, we see our first substitute, which could be Talonflame. Gale Wings gives flying type moves, which Tailwind is a flying type move, priority at full HP. It also has access to Quick Guard for Fake Out, Taunt. Its base speed is 126, so actually with the Gale Wings boost, it actually outsped Whimsicott in a one-on-one. -on -one. Most people use that as a, as a way to take out Whimsicott as Talonflame entered into VGC 2020. And some of the cons of Talonflame is that Fake Out or Chip from Sand will lose priority. So as soon as Talonflame takes any damage, even if it's as little as one HP, Talonflame no longer gets that priority on flying type moves. And some people see it as frail. I think you could EV it to take certain hits depending on what you need it for. But if you're looking to just get that first turn one Tailwind off, Talonflame might be your best replacement for Whimsicott. The next option that we have here is Braviary. Now, Braviary is a strong offensive Pokemon, and in some cases, Max Airstream can replace Tailwind. So if you have two Pokemon on the field and you Max Braviary, you can get up to plus two and those and those boosts won't go away in four turns and plus two is basically the same thing as tailwind but the thing is it'll take at least two turns for those two speed boosts to come into play and that's if braviary gets both of those off now its base speed is 80 so a lot of hyper offense can steamroll braviary and one shot it before it can get those max airstreams off or the tailwind off in some situations and this Pokemon is geared more towards offense, so setting Tailwind takes turns. So with Braviary, you kind of want to get a max Airstream, which is a speed boost that helps, but it's not a plus two speed boost, it's only a plus one turn one, or a max Knuckle, which can boost its offense and attack. So taking the time to set Tailwind turn one will take Braviary out of its offensive role, and probably give it damage that it doesn't need to take if it's trying to sweep. So this Pokemon doesn't get a lot of supportive moves as well. That's another con for a Whimsicott replacement. It shouldn't, because like I said before, Braviary is more of an offensive Pokemon. Our next Whimsicott substitute could be Pelipper. So one of the bonuses of Pelipper based on your team is that it sets rain for Swift Swim users. Since we've looked at who was eliminated and the Series 6 rules change, we actually lost Venusaur, so Sun is going to lose one of its biggest users, and Rain is probably going to step up in its place. Not only that, but we lost Tyranitar for Sand. So Rain setters did not get eliminated at all, so Rain is going to be very prominent in the metagame come Series 6. Pelipper also has access to Wide Guard and U-Turn, and it has decent base defenses with 100 in regular defense and 70 in special defense. Some of the downsides of Pelipper is its low base speed, so it kind of needs that tailwind to start doing well, but when you pair it with a Swift Swimmer, Pelipper speed really doesn't matter because the Swift Swimmer is going to get double speed from the Swift Swim anyway, so that's kind of one of the cons of this is that Pelipper is usually used in a role of setting rain and not a role of setting tailwind. Another con for Pelipper is that it's four times weak to electric being a water and flying type and it has a low base HP of 60. And my last Whimsicott substitute for tailwind would be Rabombi. So Rabombi is fast with a base speed of 124 just two points away from tying with Talonflame and it actually has a lot of support moves. So if you're looking for something with a lot of support and Tailwind, Rabombi might be that one to take Whimsicott's place. You don't get the Prankster priority, but there is a lot of good things with Rabombi. You get Speed Swap, Pollen Puff, Helping Hand, Fake Tears, and Trick. Pollen Puff being especially good, counting on the fact that if you hit an opponent, it damages them. If you hit a teammate, it heals them. 
So one thing that Whimsicott didn't have is a way to recover, whether it was itself, unless you count it Giga Drain or Absorb, or it didn't really have a way to heal teammates. Rambombi does. So one con I see with Rambombi is that Speed Swap is a first turn thing. So Rambombi has a high speed stat. So it's probably going to get a Speed Swap off. So in most cases where you're trying to speed up the Pokemon you're supporting, speed swap is actually usually better in some situations than taking the time to set a Tailwind. Okay, so next, uh, speed, speed control. Tailwind is used because Tailwind is a form of speed control. If you're giving yourself plus two, really when it comes to the standing competition, you're really making the opposing team minus two, if that makes sense. So you can decrease your opponent's speed instead of increasing your own. So we're going to take a look at that as replacements for Whimsicott in the form of speed control that's not Tailwind. So the first suggestion that I have her is Raichu. Raichu has access to Fake Out, Nuzzle, which paralyzes, Thunder Wave, which paralyzes, Brick Break, which helps against screens such as Alola Ninetales or Lapras, and it has a high base speed at 110. Raichu also comes with Lightning Rod, so Lightning Rod will redire redirect Lightning Attacks, which, like I said, the Lapras before, is actually really good. One bad thing about Raichu is that it has a low base HP and defense, which makes it very frail. But then again, Whimsicott was one of those Pokemon that usually always had a Focus Sash on them. So if you're using it as a Whimsicott replacement, that Focus Sash can just go right on Raichu. My next option for speed control is Rotom. So one of the pros about Rotom is that it has different forms to fit different teams. So maybe a Pure Electric isn't going to work out. You can use Rotom Wash for Water Electric. You can use Rotom Cut for Grass Electric. Uh, heat, Fan, Fridge. Is that the Ice Rotom? Rotom Fridge? I think it's Rotom Frost. Yeah, Rotom Frost. So these are all different forms, so it can fit better in a tight matchup for speed control. And Rotom has access to a lot of different spreads and sets. So you can do a bulkier Rotom, which you usually see with the Rotom Wash. You can do an offensive Rotom, which could be any of the Rotoms, or you could have a Nasty Plot set. Another benefit to Rotom is that it does have access to Levitate, and with Exadrill leaving its Mold Breaker and High Horsepowers behind, it's not going to be affected by any ground moves, which is a weakness for Electric types. So you're actually going to do very well type matchup wise without extra drill running around. You still have to watch out for other Pokemon with Mold Breaker, but extra drill was the biggest thing that kept Rotom in check most of the time. Rotom has access to Thunder Wave, which will slow the Pokemon down, which is why it's on the list for speed control, but it also has access to Will-O-Wisp, which could decrease an opponent's damage by burning them. You also see things like Ally Switch and Volt Switch. Rotom can be a good replacement if you want to use it as a form of speed control instead of Whimsicott. Some of the negative things about it is that it does have a low HP stat, which is 50, and it has like a higher mid base speed of 86. The one thing about these forms of speed control is that Whimsicott got the speed control through Tailwind immediately because of prankster so if you're trying to do speed control especially with the way that speed shifts in generation 8 and it activates immediately getting that thunder wave off or the nuzzle off as soon as possible or the tailwind off as soon as possible is going to be the most beneficial for your team so having a lower to high base speed is going to be better so you want a higher speed so you can Thunder Wave those Pokemon faster. You can slow them down quicker. Now, my next form of speed control is actually a weird one, but if you don't believe me, check out Jamie Boyd's series uh, where he actually takes really underrated Pokemon and tries to make them good and tries to make them work, and he actually really likes Charger Bug, 
which is where I got the idea to put Charger Bug on this list. So Charger Bug becomes really bulky with Eviolate. It has access to String Shot, which actually does minus two speed on both of the Pokemon on your opponent's side. So it's basically like a reverse tailwind. So instead of you speeding yourself up plus two, you're actually slowing your opponents down minus two, which as I said before, is just the same thing as setting a, a tailwind. It does have access to Thunder Wave for speed control for those Pokemon that might not need to get hit with a string shot or if you've already hit a string shot off. And then Skitter Smack does minus one to special attack. Skitter Smack being one of the newer moves found in the Isle of Armor move tutors. That's a move that you can put on Charger Bug and you can start to chip down on a opponent's special attack. Kind of like what you would do with a Snarl from Arcanine or Incineroar. Another thing that makes Charger Bug really interesting, especially if you're building around special attackers, is the ability Battery. So Battery will actually boost special attackers on your side of the field. So you can pair it with a quicker, heavy hitting special attacker, maybe even a Duraludon, and slow down the opponent and get a boost on Duraludon just by being on the field. Now, one of the problems with this strategy is that Charger Bug's base speed is 36. And like I said, with speed control, the sooner you can get it off, the better. It is bulky with Eviolite, but it's still kind of easy to knock out. It has little to no offense. You might get like a Nuzzle or a Bug Bite, which could be good in certain situations, but Skitter Smack is usually the best move that you can put on Charger Bug other than the supporting moves. And because it's so slow, Charger Bug can be easily taunted. And my last option for speed control is Trick Room. Maybe you needed that Tailwind. Well, instead of going for the Tailwind, you can try a Trick Room. That might be an ample form of speed control for a lot of, if you're depending on a lot of mid-tier speed Pokemon and you're going against a higher speed tier team. I think we all know how Trick Room works at this point, so I really don't need to explain the pros and cons of Trick Room. But the one thing that I do want you to think about if you do decide to go for Trick Room instead of Tailwind is that Trick Room kind of forces you to limit your team building to Trick Room oriented Pokemon. So if you were running a Draco Zolt and a Whimsicott before to get a Tailwind to speed boost the Draco Zolt, to get those high hitting attacks off, those max attacks off, that's not gonna work in Trick Room unless you're facing something that clearly outspeeds the Draco Zolt. And then once again, it's also going to take a turn to set up unlike prankster tailwind which happened turn one as soon as possible so next we talk about whimsicott in the role as a prankster pokemon so whimsicott was used primarily for tailwind but that wasn't the only thing that whimsicott did whimsicott had things like taunt it had things like helping hand fake tears charm as i said in the in the beginning of this video whimsicott had access to so many different moves that benefit it from the prankster ability. So on this list, I'm going to take a look at four prankster Pokemon that if you're not using Whimsicott mainly as a Tailwind setter, but more as a supporting role, these Pokemon might do. Our first one is Lipard. Lipard gets access to Fake Out, Taunt, Fake Tears, Charm, Copycat, Beat Up, which is a lot of the moves that Whimsicott had. It also gets access to Weather, via sunny day and rain so it could fit that role of whimsicott as long as you weren't relying on whimsicott to set up tailwind another benefit of lipard is that it is a dark type pokemon for those of you who don't know dark type pokemon cannot be affected by moves that are boosted by prankster so if someone tries to thunder wave the lipard to slow it down and they have prankster prankster thunder wave will not work on lipard prankster taunt will not work on on lipard now, a regular Taunt and a regular th Thunder Wave from a non-Prankster Pokemon will, but when it comes to Prankster on Prankster battles, it seems like Dark Types have the advantage there, and Lipard and the next Pokemon I'm going to talk about are two of those that do. 
So one negative with Lipard is that it's low base HP defense and special defense. This is a very frail Pokemon. It is very high in speed, but if you're using it mainly as a prankster setter, you're really not going to worry about the speed because your prankster moves are getting priority anyway. But like I said, most Whimsicott's were running the Focus Sash, so you can just move that Focus Sash on the Lipard if you were using Whimsicott as a more supportive role than just a Tailwind setter. Our next one is Grimmsnarl. So Grimmsnarl is probably the most, the second most used prankster Pokemon besides Whimsicott. I want to say Meowstic might might compete with it, but Grimmsnarl probably is the second most used prankster Pokemon. It gets access to Fake Out. It gets access to Taunt. It gets access to Fake Tears and dual screens. That's something that Whimsicott didn't have, the ability to set light screen and reflect. So you may not get that speed initially, but you can get those screens that will help your Pokemon stay on the field for longer. Once again, as I said before, it is dark type, so it can't be prankstered back. One of the cons of Grimmsnarl is for move syndrome. So Grimmsnarl has access to so many things. It wants to do so many things it kind of struggles to figure out what it wants to do unless you've really crafted a Grimmsnarl for your team. The thing with Whimsicott is that Whimsicott really set Tailwind and then it just kind of sat there and supported the other Pokemon until it got knocked out. With Grimmsnarl, you don't know if you want to fake out or set screens or set Thunder Wave and you have you should have an attacking move with Grimmsnarl. So it's kind of hard to figure out what four, move, four moves you want on there. But if you really want to run Grimmsnarl, you can definitely figure it out. Grimmsnarl doesn't have access to Helping Hand, which will boost your teammates' moves. It doesn't have access to Charm, and it doesn't have access to Weather. So if you were using Whimsicott as a Weather Setter, that's not going to be the role that Grimmsnarl does on your team. Grimmsnarl is mainly, mostly known for a Screen Setter, but other than that, it all depends on what you need on your team. Now, the next prankster Pokemon we're going to look at is Meowstic. Now, Meowstic is a pretty fast Pokemon, and I've actually seen a lot of these on Sun, Ro Sun Room teams. Uh, you have access to Fake Out, Helping Hand, Taunt, and the Weather that we talked about before. It also is one of the few Pokemon on this prankster list that gets access to Imprison and Trick Room. So if your opponent leads a Trick Room setter, you can just imprison turn one and lock them out of using that Trick Room as long as Meowstic is on the field. The one bad thing about Meowstic is that it doesn't have Fake Tears or Taunt. So with it not being a Dark type, it can be Taunted. So you might have to switch your Meowstic out if that happens, but it still does have that Helping Hand and Fake Out to help your teammate get the action it needs through getting attacks out or faking out a threat to your teammate. And the last prankster Pokemon I want to look at is Klefki. Now Klefki is one of the newer ones that came in with the Isle of Armor DLC and Klefki is kind of like, I want to say like a weaker Grimmsnarl. Its typing is a little different. It does have really good typing being Steel and Fairy so it does resist a lot other things you see with clef key is that it is a weather setter so you once again you can use it uh for the sunny day for the chlorophyll teams or the charizard teams like you could with meowstic and you also get dual screens so you can have the weather that you need and both screens and one attacking move which could work really well with a lot of teams now clef key does get access to imprison as well but it does not get access to Trick Room. So you can't really use Clef Key that well to stop a Trick Room team. Another con that I see with Clef Key is that there is no Helping Hand, no Fake Tears, and like I said before, no Trick Room. But if you want to use it with a Weather Team and don't want to use Drizzle or Drought, because our only drought user now is Ninetales. So if you want a more supportive Sunsetter, you can always go with a Prankster Clef Key with Sunny Day and Screens to bulk up that Charizard. 
Now, one of the niche roles that Whimsicott did really well is a beat up Pokemon. Now, beat up is a move that does an attack for every Pokemon you have in your party. So if you're doing VGC doubles, you'll have four Pokemon turn one. So if you click at turn one, you'll get four hits. Now, the thing about this move is that it is a dark type. You can use it to hit your Swords of Justice, which are Virizion, Cabalion, and Terrakion, and give them a plus four attack boost, attack boost turn one. This can be really good and turns Cobalion and Terrakion and sometimes Verizion into real threats as soon as the match starts. Now Whimsicott was good for this because it had a low attack stat which doesn't really matter what beat up anyway because it uses the attack stat of your party as a whole. But Whimsicott was one of the faster Pokemon that did this and you want to actually hit your Cobalion, Terrakion, Verizion before they attack turn one so you can get that damage output immediately so when we look up for a beat up user we want to look for a faster beat up user there are slower Pokemon that have beat up but you want to be able to outspeed your swords of justice or your arcanine or your lucario to make beat up as effective as possible now some replacements i have for this are weevil and sneezile uh, they both have access to fake out and taunt which can really be good for slowing down the opposing team if they want to set up or if they want to set trick room you can take a moment to pause that turn one of getting that beat up off and taunt a dust clops or fake out uh in senior that wants a parting shot or or fake out an arcanine that wants to burn your sword to justice pokemon and when we look at their base speeds they're actually really high weavile being at 125 and sneasel being at 115. another benefit that actually only affects Sneasel and not Weavile is that Sneasel is inner focus which prevents flinching. So if someone tries to fake out your Sneasel turn one to stop it from getting that beat up off, it's actually going to go through the fake out. It's still going to take that damage, but it's not going to stop it from using beat up, which is actually really critical uh, because a lot of beat up strategies can get shut down just by stopping the beat up in general whether it's from fake out or redirection the next one we're going to look at is alolan persian so alolan persian is actually a really good uh support pokemon and it can still hit hard with foul play but it also gets access to fake out taunt and parting shot which helps it support like i said we we, we and sneval the role of shutting down certain strategies turn one it has a 115 base speed, so you can use it over Sneasel. And Rattle will boost its speed when it's intimidated. So if they do set an intimidator on the field turn one, Alolan Persian is going to be even faster. For my next one, I picked Thievil. Now, uh, Marcos and his channel Moxie Boosted has been a really big advocate for Thievil, and one of the ways that he used it is as a beat up Pokemon. So what he would do is lead in DD Thievil to set up the Psychic Terrain and activate Psychic Seeds with Thievil, and then switch in his Swords of Justice Pokemon. Unfortunately, you were not able to do that because the Psychic Terrain that Ndidi would bring will not be allowed in C series six because Ndidi is banned. Thievil also gets access to Snarl, which can shut down special attackers, Taunt to shut down strategies, and Parting Shot to switch out. Its base speed is 90, which is actually the slowest on this list, but it does have that ability Unburden that, that Marcos took advantage of. Unburden doubles your speed when you're without an item, which is why he would set the Psychic Terrain before bringing in Terrakion or Kerbalion. That way the Psychic Seeds would burst, giving Thievil a plus one in special defense and allowing it to survive a lot of hits and getting that beat up off. For my last one is Salazzle. Salazzle is a very frail Pokemon that a lot of people haven't been using, but it could fit that role as a fast beat up user. Now it does get access to Fake Out and Taunt just like the other Pokemon. So it can shut down strategies on your opponent's side besides getting that beat up off. And it also has access to Will-O-Wisp. 
Now, keeping the Swords of Justice on the field and letting them take advantage of that plus four attack is one of the best things you can do. And Will-O-Wisp, cutting down your damage output of your opponent is actually a really good thing to have. So Salazzle could make that fit into a good beat up user for those Swords of Justice strategies. And its base speed is 117, which fits it right above Alolan Persian and Sneasel, but right under Weavile. So that concludes what I think the roles that Whimsicott fits and how you might be able to replace them. Like I said before, you're going to have to rework your team in some way if you decide to choose one of these Pokemon to replace Whimsicott, but some of these could be good alternatives to Whimsicott on your team based on how you're using it. The biggest hit that Whimsicott's removal is going to be, are going to have, is the Tailwind. So not being able to have that turn one Tailwind is really going to hurt a lot of teams, a lot of hyper offense, and it's going to make the game interesting to see how many people are going to choose one of the four Pokemon I listed earlier to replace it. Next, I want to say thanks to some of these places where I got sources from. Serebii is where I get images of the Pokemon for these videos. It's one of the best informational sites about Pokemon overall on the internet. I got a lot of information about speed tiers and move coverage from Smogon. I really didn't use data decks or Picolytics in this video to look up usage stats because I just wanted to look at it as more of a sense of a role that Whimsicott did rather than usage of, okay, Whimsicott's not there anymore, where's the next prankster Pokemon? I wanted to see more of a role that Whimsicott did and see which prankster Pokemon would fit that role, which Tailwind Setter would fit that role the best. And then Bulbapedia gave me the base speed stat spread for Whimsicott in the beginning of the video, so I want to say thank you to that. So what I want to know now is what did you think about this video? Let me know down in the comments below how you plan on recovering from Whimsicott's disappearance. Also, let me know how do you feel about the Series 6 rule change. If I make another one of these videos, if I have the time to do it, which Pokemon should I cover next? Also, if you made it this far in the video, I want to say thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been trying to make consistent content and that's probably going to slow down with school starting, which is why I decided to do a PowerPoint to get my PowerPoint skills sharp again. But anyways, the more people supporting my content, the better. We just bumped up to 170 subscribers, so I'm really excited about that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Anyways, I'm Zach and I'll see you in the next one.